once it decides to stop going round and round. Good morning, everybody. I'm here with the beautiful Michelle Ann Collins, who is one of the authors inside of Phoenix Rising with us here at Four Eagles Publishing. Welcome, Michelle. Lovely to see you. Thanks, Taryn. Great to be here. Now, Michelle is already an author. She's a certified yoga therapist, and she's also a wellness coach. She's a graduate of Reed College in Portland, Oregon, and she studied neuroscience. Super interesting, by the way. <laughs> After suffering a series of heartbreaking losses, including the loss of her mother to cancer, her divorce, and losing her second husband to suicide, Michelle survived through deep study of healing arts and spiritual practices. She now shares the tools and knowledges she developed from her journey. She teaches that post-traumatic growth is possible and everyone, no matter what they've experienced, can live a fulfilling and joyful life. Okay, so welcome, Michelle. What an important mission that you have. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Yeah. Now, tell me more about your business. Now, I'm a yoga teacher myself, and um, I did love the idea of yoga therapy. For the people who are listening who don't know what yoga therapy is, can you tell us a bit more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So yoga therapy was developed to create a therapeutic environment in using not just the physical practice of yoga, but especially meditation, uh, breath work, and emotional support. So it's very trauma-based. Um, there's a lot of one-to-one. -one. It's mostly one-to-one, -one, although I do teach a group class a few times a week to people who are mobility challenged. But yoga sure. therapy really tries to take into account uh, you know, a more therapeutic approach as if you were going to a therapist um, for mental health, but the, you know, yoga as well. And then you can also go to a yoga therapist for say a knee injury or back pain or anything mm. like that. So just like you would go to a physio or something like that, it's an alternative method of healing? Yes, exactly. Amazing. Amazing. What a beautiful holistic approach to um, being and also that more, uh, I guess, next level approach to yoga because yoga is so mainstream now, um, you know, in Western society. And I feel like yoga therapy is that next um, more in-depth approach to healing. Yeah. Just like you would go to Path or anything like that. So who is your ideal client, Michelle? Do you work with both men and women? Who is your ideal client? I am open to working with both men and women, although I seem to mostly attract women, um, and especially women who have been through something traumatic. Yeah. Uh, often my clients have, you know, it might be something physically, physically traumatic, like, for example, a hip replacement, a knee replacement, a car accident. Um, one of my clients was in a near fatal motorcycle accident, and I worked with him when he couldn't even stand up, could barely even sit up. And um, by the time we were done working together, he was walking. It was really inspiring. But wow. I think that people understand because I've been through so many challenges and trauma that mm -hmm. I am able to hold space for others who have been through these difficult times. I can hold space for people who are grieving and really struggling and able mm -hmm. to connect practices that I practice myself sure. for, you know, I put together practices for them to be, begin the healing process. Mm, yeah, and this is what makes people stand out, right, and why people choose to work with you as a, as a therapist rather than another yoga therapist. It's allowing them to realize that you have been through something similar or that you understand the process and that you use these tools yourself. Um, and when we're telling stories inside of these multi-author book projects or stories on our social, and we're being really real and raw and vulnerable and open to showing people who we really are and sharing bits of ourselves that perhaps we're not taught traditionally in marketing or business, that people are going to gravitate towards you naturally. Because like you just said, people gravitate towards me because they realize that I understand, they realize that I've been through something similar. Yeah. Right. But telling your story inside something like Phoenix Rising, where it's not like this bland business book where it's like, oh, I'm a yoga therapist and this is what yoga therapy is and da 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 da. Not that that's not important, but it's not actually what people really care about 
first and foremost. So when you're telling them a story, and I'm assuming, correct me if I'm wrong, that your story inside Phoenix Rising is about the losses and the trauma that you've experienced in your lifetime. Is that correct? Yeah, I'm specifically in this chapter focusing on the immediate aftermath of my husband's suicide mm -hmm. and how I got myself. I, I tell a very detailed, specific story about uh, something that happened just a few days after he died and how mm -hmm. I overcame it or how I got through it. And then another really big challenge that happened a few weeks later and I think that it's a really good example of how when you are at your lowest point, it, there, there's, there's always a, a way to get up and get walking and get moving. And so that's why I chose this particular story for this book. Yeah, amazing. So when your ideal client is reading something like this, this is just rapidly accelerating. Thanks, babe. My... Um, your no light trust factor right so people by the time they come to book that call with you or hit your socials or your website they feel like they've known you forever because you've told them something that you would usually only reserve for a close friendship circle right now i'm not saying when we're in business that we need to go out and just sprout our you know most inner secrets and hurts and things all over the internet that's not what i'm saying but we do have to tell stories to connect because storytelling is the only thing that is going to reach out through the screen and hug your ideal client or tap them on the heart and go hey i'm your person and we yeah. can't explain it it's a feeling it's like this biological neurological thing that happens right that allows us to recognize our people and where we belong yeah. do you have anything to say about that well i love how you said tap them on the heart i i think mm -hmm. that's true it when someone reads my story you know i don't i don't publish these stories just like you said just to get my my dirt out on the internet it's because i'm hoping that they will touch someone and help them realize that there's help out there, there's community and uh, telling my story will hopefully in, inspire someone else to go through a healing process as well. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you're right, it's absolutely, it's not, it's not you're putting your dirt on the internet. It's what I meant by that was that in hindsight, it's good to tell the story. Give it some space. Give yourself the space to integrate and learn the lesson. That's when you come and tell the story. Whilst you're in yeah. it and it's messy and your ego brain is like short-circuiting and going, this is horrendous and I hate everything and what's going on and why me and all those sorts of natural human behaviors and emotions that come up, that's not a good time to, to tell that particular story. <laughs> no, I mean, that's a good time to tell your story or write your story for your own personal healing. I, you know, I think I'm a big fan of journaling or, or telling your story to process emotions. But yeah, if you're, if you're doing it to help others, probably not immediately after. Yeah, yeah, definitely allow that space so that you can integrate and have that hindsight. Well, I am super excited to read your story. And I know all of the authors inside of Phoenix Rising are furiously writing because they're submitting their manuscript um, on Monday, which is super exciting. And we have our next book open, which is Corporate Dropouts, our next multi-author book project under Four Eagles Rising. Corporate Dropouts from Employee to Entrepreneur, Meet the Entrepreneurs Who Took the Leap and Soared. So if you're listening to this and you resonate with anything we've been talking about or you want to explore the possibility of becoming a best-selling author and you know, increasing your visibility, credibility, raising your prices, all those fun, amazing things that come along from doing something in this expansive container, then please reach out, send me a message and let me know. But Michelle, I do have a question for you. Why did you say yes to joining a project like this? What was the pull for you? 
The pull, Taryn, was to spread my message further and wider than it's already been spread in my previous book and the books to come. I have a couple more books coming out as well. Um, just to try to make sure, even if someone doesn't become a client necessarily or even get on my mailing list or contact me directly, come to a workshop, whatever I'm doing, even if it doesn't bring someone into my immediate presence, just to reassure people who've been through things that they can get through it and that no matter what happens to you, you can live a life in joy. Mm, amazing. And that's what everybody really wants, right? And I love to write too. Yeah, yeah, writing. So has the process thus far been everything that you hoped it would be? Has anything come up for you that was unexpected or tell me about that? You know, it, a little bit, I have to say, just because every writing project is different and every mm -hmm. piece that I write comes out just a little, I always get a little surprised, like, oh, you know, I, I think I've processed all of this, but then there's always more, always a deeper layer. And so even in my sharing of my story in interests of others and in interests of connecting with people who are going through difficult times, I am also continuing my healing process. Mm, yeah, I find that that's one of the most um, potent gifts inside. Even, you know, we're like, oh, it's only a chapter. The actual healing, like when every time I do it, I feel like I'm always surprised. It's like, whoa, I thought I dealt with that. And then it's like, yeah. you know, all of this stuff comes up, but then it feels so much more expansive. It feels like an energetic unplugging of sorts or like someone is like ruffled up my wings and I'm, I can, you know, stretch them that little bit further. Yeah. Um, and that in itself is a joyful feeling. Yes. Yeah. And just a chapter, it's it, it's actually, I think it's harder to write just a single chapter because yeah. you have to focus so much and, you know, it's such a limited space. Your, your story that you choose and your words have to be so potent. Mm. But the beauty in that is that in that practice, you become so skilled at telling your story in a succinct and really you know, connective way that when you go on podcasts or get invited to speak at events or on radio shows or on TV, which a lot of my clients have gone on to do, is that you've already nailed that technique, right? And that's why the media loves authors or writers, because they have been forced to organize their thoughts in such a manner, which makes them really good speakers. Yeah, beautiful. Well, thank you so much for being here with me today, Michelle. It's an absolute thank pleasure. You. Thank you. And I can't wait to read your story when it gets submitted next week. Have a wonderful day. Okay, you too. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.